Chinese Copper Belt Province brings to you The Lens, a program designed to bring insightful information on economics, mining, education, health, tourism, agriculture, environmental issues, sports, entertainment, current affairs, and many issues affecting the well-being of society. Some viewers on the lens, and today we are discussing football, and I am your host, Tovi Ningombe, and uh, to discuss the programs for today, on my panel, I have Mr. Musonda Chilambwe. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Tovin. And I also have um, Melvin Melek. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Tovin. All right. Uh, on today's program, we shall be looking at the game between Zambia versus Chad, which will be played at Lev Manawasa Stadium at uh, 15 hours on Friday, 11th October 2024. And we shall also look at the game, uh, the Kosafa women's football team, uh, they will be actually traveling to uh, South Africa for the Kwasafa and the draws have been done already. We shall be looking at that uh, at, 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 at the games the girls will be playing in South Africa. And we shall also look at the under-20 uh, qualification prior to the Africa Cup nation team for the under-20. And also we shall look at the Premier League games that were played over the weekend uh, for the week uh, seven. And also, we shall also look at the English Premier League games which were played also over the weekend. Uh, gentlemen, let's look at the game that Zambia is going to play on Friday. How do you look at the coach Avram Grant's selection? Melvin. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Tovin. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the selection of the team, yeah, quite all right. Uh, there are a number of players that have returned to the team. I may cite uh, some players uh, like uh, Frank Msonda has returned uh, uh, to the team and obviously he's going to partner either Stopilan Sunzu and uh, Kabaso Chongo. That's good enough for, for, for the backline for Zambia because uh, if you look at uh, Frank Msonda... Actually, Melvin, Stopila Sunzu has been ruled that now. He won't be player and the captain, Rwamba Msonda, they are part of the team that have been... Uh, been uh, the players are, have, have injuries. So they have joined the, the young banda with injuries. So they won't be part of the team. Soon they won't be part of the team. That makes it even interesting because now uh, Kabasa Chongo will have an opportunity to partner with uh, Frank Musonda who has just returned to the team. And for me, uh, Frank Musonda is a very good player in that uh, he's able to command. He has a commanding force. If you have seen the way he, he plays at the back, he's able to give instructions as if he's a captain of the side. So for me, Frank Msonda, getting back to the team makes it very interesting for Zambia. And for your own information, uh, uh, Tobin, this game is quite very important, very significant game for Zambia. If Zambia is to qualify, we need to win this uh, match at all costs. We need to beat our child home and away. Now, the game that will be played on Friday, uh, if you look at uh, uh, Coach Avram Grant, I'm happy that he has also uh, uh, tried to recall uh, Kingston Mutandra. I've always talked about this player. I've watched this player play in the Italian Serie A. I think he is a player who is very physically fit. He's able to run with the ball and uh, he's able to shoot from afar. So for me, uh, Avram Grant calling uh, Kingston Mutandra and uh, Kingsley uh, Kangwa coming from uh, Israel and the older brother who has also been pushed in the team. For mm -hmm. me, I think it's a good move because they have got pace and they are able, they're able to, to run with the ball and be able to, 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 you know, to play and uh, surpass the opponent. So it's a good move and uh, young players have been called. Let us show Tachama, we saw how he performed. I think he was able to play partner with uh, Kelvin Kampamba who even scored that uh, important goal for Zambia. So I think it will be very interesting to see these players that have been called. Uh, uh, Victor Chow from Changa Rangers has also returned to the team in the goalkeeping area. Uh, so I think it's a, it's, a good, uh, it's a good squad for Zambia and uh, we expect good results at Levi Monosa Stadium uh, on Friday. Pamuzo, how do you look at the game in Zambia versus Chad? This is a very... And the lineup that Abraham Grant has put up. Mm, it's, it's interesting, just like my colleague has put it, and it's a very tricky encounter for us because we need all the three points for us to be on a safe side. Um, for now, I can say the team which has been assembled 
It's the best we can provide as the, for, for the Zambians as a national team. Uh, we just have to we just have to to be confident in our boys and believe it that they can deliver. I'm sure playing before the home support, they are going to do their best and deliver and get the three points which is required. Um, there are certain players who are missing there. They might be missing on paper, but actually even when they are there in the team, they don't make any, any, any big difference. So we just have to believe in ourselves and rely on the material which is on the ground. Otherwise, if we keep on crying over spilled milk, then we won't be able to, to deliver. So, um, Mutandwa, just like he has put it, Mutandwa is, 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 a, is a good player who has been given the, the, the opportunity to prove himself. People have been calling for his uh, presence in the team, and now it's time for him to prove it, that he can do it and he can provide the goals that, those which are needed. Otherwise, in the absence of uh, Nsunzu, we have Kava Sochongo to fill up for, for him. And uh, the other guys, uh, Aaron Kateva, is there to fill up for him. Since Frank Msonda is back in the team, the lead of our defenses are now is Frank Msonda. And Frank Msonda is a very good player and is a reliable defender for me because he has that uh, leadership quality in him. He knows how to line up with defense and how to communicate with them. When he's moving, he calls them with him, with them let's go, guys. When he stops, he tells them to stop. That's what we need in the defense. Otherwise, his absence proved to be a very big problem for us. So since he's back, we have to be confident that the defense will be at its best. All right. And looking at the selection as well, uh, Melvin, uh, we are missing key players there. Sunzu is out. Musonda is out. Chirufia is out. Banda is out. Patson is out. Fashion Sakala, his issue with Avram Ground not yet solved, he's out. And we, it's like we have a total new team now. Yeah, yeah the, the team looks uh, to be uh, still okay, uh, Tobin. Uh, if you look at uh, the players that you have mentioned, if you look at the game that we played Sierra Leone, yes, we, we, we had uh, Lamek Banda substituted was he, uh, because of the same injury. We had uh, Sobila Suzo, yes, he was at the back, but uh, for me, I think he was a little bit slow. And uh, with uh, the coming in of Frank Emerson, I think he's a very good replacement uh, in, in, in defense, just like uh, uh, Muzo had said. Uh, so for me, even when we have uh, Pat Ondaka uh, absent, we have uh, 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 the, the Fashion Sakala, who is also just got issues, like you have said, with uh, Coach Avram Grant. And for your information, uh, for me, I think I've already uh, always uh, mentioned that uh, it is important that uh, Coach Avram Grant you know, uh, puts national interests uh, uh, at, at heart, uh, uh, as opposed to personal interest. For me, I think you, you should have sat down uh, a fashion sakala so that this issue, this issue would have been resolved. But if you listen to the, the interview that he had, for me, I think it doesn't even add up. Uh, because uh, he mentioned, he was quoted uh, towards the end of the interview that uh, for far set their own problem. So what does he up to? Why, what is he up to? For me, I think it doesn't even, for lack of a better term, I think he has no regard uh, for what FAS is trying even to ensure that uh, maybe the two parties are brought to terms so that Fashion Sakala may return to the team. But if you quoted him towards the last interview, to, towards the end of the interview, he was uh, 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 quoted saying that uh, for FAS, that is their problem. What's he, what, what he want is uh, to ensure that uh, Fashion Sakala uh, uh, does apologize to him and then uh, things will be okay. But how do you force someone to to apologize. I'm, I'm saying so because uh, for me, I think I did listen to Fashion Sakala and uh, the way he explained it, um, it's like uh, he was on point and you cannot apo apologize when you know that uh, you, did, you, you, you are saying the right thing. How do you apologize uh, when you're talking of uh, something which is right? So for me, I think it was very important for uh, Coach Avram Grant to sit Fashion Sakala down and uh, probably uh, uh, settle the matter and they're uh, going to the national team. He has been scoring uh, goals for fun, I think, in Saudi Arabia. And it's quite important that uh, he's returned to the team and uh, add more value. We are playing, uh, uh, qualif we are qualifying for the Nations Cup. And it is for Mother Zambia. So if we are missing key players like Fashion Sakala, Person Daka, we are aware that uh, is injured. Why not bring back uh, Fashion Sakala so that uh, he's able to partner with uh, probably, we have skewed uh, personnel like uh, 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 the younger. Uh, younger player, Kirita Chama. If Fashion Sakala is also 
be in the team. I think Zambia would do very well because he has got pace and he'll be able to provide those uh, crosses and Zambia will be able to utilize those opportunities. So we are missing, yes, key players, but I still feel that uh, the return to the, uh, to the team by uh, Avram Grant calling Kingston Mutano, I think let him give him opportunity just like he, he gave opportunity to Obino Chisala. I think we saw what Obino Chisala is made of and uh, he is quite an uh, enterprising uh, player. So Kingston Mutando is back. And for me, I think the team looks very sharp, it's stable, and will be able to beat Chad. And I want, or I may say that, uh, let us beat Chad home and away. We collect six maximum points, we are good to qualify. Indeed. Bamuzo, key uh, players missing in the team. And uh, Abraham Grant has brought in the young stars also, like in the name of Sabob, Kington Tandwa, and Miguel Chaiwa, and the others. Uh, are we going to see fire for fire on Friday? You know, those boys, they have been called to the national team. Some of them, they have been there and they have been warming up the bench. Now that the opportunity has come, it's, it's time for them to prove themselves that they can deliver even in the absence of the big boys and show it to the coach that you rely so much on the big boys, even as we can do it. Like the, that boy, Savobo Banda. He's a very good player. We just have to give it to him. We, we can't take anything, anything away from him. He's a very good player. In the absence of Lamek Banda, I'm sure he's going to deliver. So Mutandwa has been called in. I'm sure he's going to deliver as well. Uh, we have Kemuka as well in the team. Yeah, Kemuka, yes. And, <laughs> I, and thank you for that. Kemuka and the greatest Trotacha have been in the team. I think the midfield is already sorted out. So the, the, for, for, for football nowadays, the, once the midfield is not functioning up to date, then you are, you, 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 are, you are not good at all to compete because the skill and the, the, the pace for Ketas Chotachama who, who help us in the midfield. And we know the authority Kemka puts up in the midfield. So those are the kind of people we need in the team. And in the goal, in between the, the two sticks, we have Lawrence Mlenga. He's, for now, he's our first choice goalkeeper. We can't take it away from him. I'm sure Chepesh as well is back in the team. So we have a good team, like I said, in, in the first place. Those are the, the, that's the material which is available as at now. We have to give them the moral support which is needed. And the senior players who are there in the team, they have to encourage the incoming young boys. The Miguel Chai was, he's played football at his highest level before. So there's nothing for him to be afraid about. So, for me, we are good to go. All right. Um, Melvin, yes, actually, Frank Musonda has already arrived, and also the, the Kangwa from uh, Prez is there in, from China. He's in the team, and the young Sabob is in, yeah. and also uh, Kelvin Mwangakampamba is also in. Gifting and the gifting, in. gifting Pande from Israel is also in. Uh, are we seeing the, uh, the coach having the material now to... to, 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 to to exercise or to, to, to prepare for the for Chad? Tommy, I think we have the material. Just like I said, uh, if you look at the players that are injured, uh, Edward Chilufia is injured, Pastor Daka is injured, Fashion Sakala is missing, and Sopila and Sunzu. Already we have a replacement for Sopila and Sunzu because we have Frankie Musonda. Talk of Edward Chilufia, he missed uh, the game that we played at uh, Levy Monowasa against Sierra Leone. And um, we had uh, young, enterprising players. We talked of uh, uh, Obino Chisal. Talked of uh, Joseph Sabobo Banda. I think they did uh, bring, uh, they, they, they played the game more, especially in the second stanza. I think you saw when we, we played Sierra Leone, I think, like Joseph Sabobo Banda, I think he was able to beat for fun. He was able to entertain the, the, the soccer fans, I mean, the, 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 yeah, the soccer fans at the stadium uh, with his skills because he was able to play with the ball, coordinate with uh, uh, um, uh, the, the younger uh, striker, uh, uh, Kennedy Musonda, I think you saw even the cross, which almost paid off for Zambia. I think uh, there was that cross that uh, um, Joseph Sabobo Bamba, uh, Banda did provide and uh, almost paid off for Zambia. So for me, I think we have a team that is quite very intact, young players and the old. I think they will be able to gel together, and I think we are good to go, and uh, we, 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 we are ready to collect six maximum, maximum points. All right, uh, if you are watching us on your lens, uh, we are discussing football, and uh, on my uh, panel, I have Musonda Chilambwe and uh, Melvin Melik 
to discuss the game of football. And we're just from discussing the game that uh, Zambia will play against Chad at Lev Manawasa Stadium in Indola on the Copper Belt. And uh, right now, gentlemen, let's look at the game uh, for, the, for the ladies. Uh, the Zambia national team women, they will be competing, or the Copper Queens, they will be competing in the Kosafa Cup and uh, draws have already been done. Zambia has been drawn against Comoros, Angola, and uh, against Angola and Comoros. And uh, the Copper Queens, if you look at the, the, the gentlemen, if you look at the same draw, it's the same draw which was there last year, year in 2023. Zambia was drawn against Angola and uh, Comoros, and it is a repeat of last year. How do you look at uh, this draw, Bamuzo? You know, I can say it's a blessing in these guys. Uh, because we played them last year in the last stanza and we beat them. So when I say it's a blessing in these guys, what I mean is we know their weakness and their strength, but we have to be careful never to underestimate your opponent in a game of football. Football, it's, it's, it has full of dynamics here and there. So the moment you underrate them, you have, it's under your peril. So... For me, it's a good group and it's a fair group. I'm sure Zambia will qualify to the next stage. This is a building process. It's not all about getting the first prize, winning the tournament. It's about building the team, continuous, build, continuous building for the national team. Because we've, that reputation, we've gone to the Olympics twice, we've been to the AFCON before, and we've already qualified to the AFCON. Uh, we've been to the World Cup. We have to keep up with the same pace, continue qualifying for these uh, major tournaments. Otherwise, if we can't, if, if we can't build from the grass, grass route, then we, we cannot make it to these competitions. So for me, what I can say, let them send the a building team, not a, a red made up team, which will be, will be only cheating ourselves that we've got a team. We have a team as at now, but let them send new players who will be able to fill in the, the, the spaces once the Kundananji and the Barbara Bandas of this world, the Grace Chanda, they fade out, and the other girls should come in to come and fill up those spaces. All right. Uh, Melvin, uh, Coach Florence Muila has already assembled a 34-member team, and they are facing the same teams which they beat. They beat Angola 3-1 uh, last year and they also beat Comoros 5-1. And this time they are meeting again. Do we see a repeat of what happens last in 2023 this time? It's quite interesting, yeah. Just like uh, Abuzo said, um, you know, facing Angola, I have watched Angola at Levi Monasa Stadium. I remember, I think this is a, uh, a team where Babla Banda, I think, scored goals for fun. Talked <laughs> of Rachel, Rachel Kundana. They scored uh, goals for fun. Uh, they beat Angola in Angola. They beat Angola at Levi Monasa Stadium. I think it, it did uh, add up to 10 goals, 10 new uh, goal, uh, goal aggregate for, for Zambia. And uh, Zambia uh, managed uh, even to qualify to the Nations uh, Cup after that uh, uh, Ghana uh, game also. So for me, facing them uh, again, uh, yes, uh, we shouldn't underlet them. I think in the game of football, just like uh, my colleague has said, we shouldn't uh, under, underlet uh, your opponent because you may uh, not know what tactics your, your opponent uh, may apply uh, during that particular uh, encounter. So it is quite important that uh, Zambia just prepare, they prepare enough for, for the for the uh, tournament so that uh, we go there and participate so that uh, we can just emerge uh, victorious. Yeah? Comoros is, a, is a quite uh, also uh, a very good team. Yes, we played them, we beat them uh, last uh, year, and I expect that Zambia should also just replicate uh, the same spirit and beat the two teams so that uh, we, we may proceed and uh, qualify. So for me, Zambia is a very good team. I think uh, we have played at a very big uh, uh, stage, Olympics and uh, many other, Afcon, you, you name it. So I think we have the experience and uh, I think we are good to go. All right, Bamuzo. Uh, Zambia in this tournament last year we reached a second where we, play, we lost in the final against uh, Malawi. Are we hoping to replicate so that we are hoping so that Malawi can reach the finals as well? We, we, we do a rematch this time. Because it, it would be a good thing if Zambia repeated the same fate 
they reach the final. If they reach the final, what I would ask for from them is to lift the cup. That would be morale boosting enough. Otherwise, we, do, we shouldn't just be competing to be there in the final. Like what happened to the under-20 boys, they lost in the final to South Africa. So we have to go back to the winning ways, whereby the Kosafa tournament is like, it's our tournament. It was meant for Zambia. When it comes to the <laughs> senior team, <laughs> when, when it comes to the senior team, we, we've won it many 12 times. times. 12 times, actually. For the senior team. Yes, we missed it. We should have lifted it 13 no, times. No, that, that's the under 20. The under 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Now I'm talking of the senior team. Yes, and the women's team, it has, it has been there before. So we just have to continue with the same trend. All right. Uh, Let's look at also the other teams in other groups. In Group A, we have um, the host, South Africa, being uh, pitted against uh, Namibia, Eswatin, and Seychelles. And uh, in, uh, group, uh, in Group uh, B, we have the defending champions, Malawians. Malawi, they are, they are, they are, the, the other teams competing in Group B, Botswana, Madagascar and uh, Mauritius. We have also Group D. Uh, in Group D, we have Lesotho, Mozambique, and uh, Zimbabwe. So these are the teams that are competing. There are 14 teams that are uh, competing at this year's tournament. It's an, an increase from the last year's teams that, had, uh, uh, that competed. Vamuzo, are we seeing a good tournament now? There are three teams have increased now. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it is becoming bigger and bigger with every edition of the tournament. I'm sure with the numbers increasing, then we, when you win such kind of a tournament, it shows that you have improved. Since the numbers increased from 12 to 14, then we just have to, to be serious with ourselves. And tactically, like I said in the first place, we should not underrate or underestimate our opponent. Whoever comes our way, we just have to be there, full throttle. If it means scoring 10 goals against them not scoring, let it be. What is needed is a team spirit. That cohesion should be there. In every game, in the game of football, it's all about cohesion. Without cohesion, you cannot get the desired results, which is, which is very difficult when you are not coordinating. And like I said if, <clears throat> about the men's team, it's the midfield which is important in football. It's how we has assembled the midfield, which, which, which is going to help us uh, get the desired results. All right. Uh, Melvin, yes, uh, look at Malawi. They've been defending champions. They've been pitted against Botswana, Madagascar, and Mauritius. Uh, are we expecting them to pull out of this group? Or maybe are they going to bring their uh, star players like Temwa and her, and her sister? Uh, quite interesting. And uh, if you see Malawi, they would obviously want to, to do the same business uh, uh, by retaining or winning again the COSAFA. I think they were a, a team to watch uh, uh, during the last uh, COSAFA tournament. I think we saw they were uh, very aggressive. They managed to win most of the games and they, they lifted the COSAFA. So for me, I think in the group that they are, um, they are, they are you said they are, they are with Is Iswatin. They are with um, uh, Mauritius, Botswana. Botswana. Yeah, those teams, I think, uh, looking at Malawi, the way they have been playing, I think it's the only team uh, for me that um, has shown the character uh, in terms of uh, improvement. Uh, if, you if you look at uh, the last uh, Kosafa tournament, I think they showed uh, Southern Africa and Africa at large that uh, they are a team to reckon with. And no wonder they are players like uh, Chawinga, who is playing at the highest, uh, uh, the two Chawingas who are playing at a very big stage uh, in the world, uh, women world football. So for me, I think Malawi is a good team. And uh, the group that they are, they, they are pitted in, uh, I think they are uh, good to proceed to the next round. All right, let's look at the team that uh, uh, Coach Florence has, uh, has, has assembled, especially in the, the, the defenders. We have Porini Zulu, the youngster who shined at the, at the World Cup. She's in the team, and we have also Margaret Berem, who missed the World Cup qualifiers. Um, yeah, 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 she's in the team. Uh, we and uh, we have also Esther Siamfuko. Uh, these are that was some of our key players. Are uh, we expecting some good football this time? Bamuzo. Just like you've mentioned it, uh, Esther Zuru, 
shipwrecked the World Cup. Berem uh, Shorin Zuru Achari. Yes, thank you for the correction. Uh, the Zulu girl and Berem, they have been there at the uh, big tournaments before. So I'm sure they'll be there to provide leadership to their friends that, and show them that which is needed. Otherwise, it's a good team. Have nothing against what the coach has called in to come. I'm sure, but when it comes to the 23 uh, finalists, would have come up with a very good and strong side. I see, and we also have Susan Katongo. It's quite important, and, um, and the return uh, of uh, Margaret Belem to the squad, I think, uh, adds more value because uh, I think Belemu did miss the Olympics. Everyone in Katongo also missed the Olympics. So for them, I think, to come back, uh, it was very interesting to see them uh, play. And uh, they have also played at a very big stage for Zambia. They have the experience. So I think Zambia, uh, we should not just underlet. I think we have a good team that have been together. They have gelled together. They have coordinated together. I think we are good to go in this tournament. And uh, we also have uh, Frida Kawe, who tormented the opponents, especially in the last uh, tournament. She was very good. And we have Ochumba Rubanji, also in the team as well. We have also Charity Mubanga in the team. Uh, we're expecting a good, uh, the, these are the strikers, some of the notable strikers, and also Natasha Nanyangwe. It's, uh, just like you've mentioned, Ochumba. Ochumba, she has a point to prove that despite being dropped out of the other team, we call it the A team, and this is the B team. Uh, she has a point to prove that I deserve to be with the uh, big guys up there. Otherwise, she's a very good player and a very good uh, striker. So we, we've got a person who's able to nick in goals at will. Once the balls are being provided to her, she's, she, she's a very good striker. And the other girls you've mentioned, yes, they're upcoming players who we need to support and who need uh, the... The time, the time to play and to prove themselves that they are good players and they are able to, to, to play for Mother Zambia. All right. Uh, let's move on also, gentlemen, to the, the Premier League games uh, which were played over the weekend, and that is uh, week uh, seven. We saw Red Arrows uh, versus uh, Zesco game. Uh, Red Arrows breaking the... The record for Zesco, they had beaten run, they broke it, and uh, they won 2-0. Two, two, we had also Zanako, 0. Kawe Warriors, 2. We had uh, Green Eagles, 2. Inkana Football Club, 1. We also had Mut Indeni, 0. Mutondo Football Club, 1. We also had Mfrira Wanderers uh, versus uh, Napsa Stars. Um, Mufuera and Wanderers winning that game and uh, Napsa Stars 0, winning 1-0. One, one to zero. Also in Changa Rangers 1, in Kwasi 1, we have Power Dynamos 5, demolishing uh, the stubborn Atletico of Rusaka 5-0. And we also had Green Buffaloes, Green Buffaloes 0, FC Musa 1. Uh, how do you look at the results, Mameovin? Yeah, let, let me start with the game. I'm a mighty fan. The one I'm clad in, Mufri Wanderers, uh, uh, Jay-Z. Um, yes, Mufri Wanderers uh, had just, uh, you know, um, um, hosted out uh, the coach, Charles Kafula, uh, on, the, on the day, a day before Mighty played. Uh, you know, they, they, they fired coach Charles Kafula on Friday, Friday night. And uh, Came Saturday, I think they had a, a very good uh, game. Uh, they managed to beat Napsa Stars uh, at uh, the iconic Shinde Stadium by a goal to nil. And that goal was scored in the 81st minute, okay? And, uh, you know, soccer fans were quite very disappointed uh, toward the end of the match because it looked like uh, Maite were to record another stalemate. But uh, Collins Makungu took it upon himself, managed to beat defenders of Napsa Stars, and slotted in a goal, which made Maite Freundas to record uh, a goal and uh, carried uh, three maximum points when they were even down uh, with one player. So they won the game uh, nine men. Okay, so that was a very huge win for Mighty and Freelanders. Now, let me look at uh, the other game where Ankana 
did lose to uh, Green Eagles away yes. in Choma. Uh, they lost two goals to one, and uh, it made um, Nkana management to even sack coach uh, Ian Bakala. It was very expected because uh, uh, the pedigree of the team, Nkana itself, and then you have, you know, Nkana, they lost to Atletico Lusaka the other week. They were beaten uh, two goals to one in Lusaka, and they traveled to Choma. Tonko Tonka Twende, you know, they played Green Eagles and they managed again. I mean, they lost two goals to one to Green Eagles. So it tells you a lot and it was very expectant that uh, the, the management from Kana, they would sack coach uh, Ian Bakala. And as we are speaking, coach Ian Bakala has been fired at Nkana, uh, is yet to, to see to, to, seen to uh, bring on board another coach. All right, uh, Vamuzo. Ian Bakala has been fired and um, I'm He's said to be replaced by Mwenyachi Pepo, the Forest Rangers uh, coach, and uh, is yet to move to uh, Nkana. How many coaches uh, is Nkana going to fire? Even last year they sacked their coach, and this year they're sacking the coach. Is it the coaches or it's the players that they have? Vamos. You know, sometimes we point, we point a wrong finger, and when I say wrong finger, uh, we point at the coach that is not doing his, his duties. Yet, it's how you assemble the team that which matters at times. It's how you assemble the team. And there are people we don't uh, point fingers at in the name of football. And they are there comfortably seated and doing the wrong things, the executive committees. For me, sometimes those are the people who bring problems in the team. Uh, because the resources are provided. For Nkana's right now, the resources are, are provided. It's the executive committee, the XCOM which is not doing its duties accordingly. Nkana is a very big team. We know it. It's, it. It has to be counted among the big boys. This is why you see that they are firing the coaches every now and then. It's because they are not performing to the expected standards. Ian Bakala, he is a good coach. But was he given the needed support that which is needed to be given to the coach? Look at the power dynamos. Power dynamos, when they come to, the, to make a decision that they are firing the coach, even the person who doesn't support power dynamos, who agree that, yes, enough is enough, let that coach go. But at Inkana, you lose two, three games, just know that the door has been opened, the exit is waiting for you to go. <laughs> Ian Bakar is a good coach. Even when Yach Pepo, where he's going, he has to be prepared. For me, uh, sorry, uh, yes. uh, coach. For me, I, I think a few Ian Bakala had uh, enough time. Uh, if you look at, uh, we, we are in week seven, and Nkana played uh, six games, and uh, they only managed to record one win. And for Ian Bakala, I think he, he has been at the helm of Nkana since the start of the season. And uh, for him, I think to continue recording losses for Nkana, Nkana is a very good squad, uh, team, and, uh, and uh, the management, they may get worried. And, uh, that's why I'm saying it was expected that Tian Bakala uh, was uh, to be shown um, an exit door. Just like Umfrida wonders, you can't, uh, you know, just be losing these two teams' uh, pedigree. I think these are the teams, they are legendary side that uh, you shouldn't uh, be playing around when you are coaching these these teams. Yeah, I think Ian Bakala, he had uh, Dennis Makinka, who came from Kwazi as a sister, face assistant uh, uh, coach, and then they they put in uh, Sade Sade Kampam also to help in the team. So I think uh, the bench for Nkana. Ian Bakala has got the experience. We have uh, Dennis Makinka, who was at the helm of Nkwazi Football Club. So I think he had uh, enough support. Uh, no wonder I'm disagreeing with uh, Coach Muzo because I think in Ghana it was high time for uh, Ian Bakala to be shown an exit door. You know, for, on that one, yes. uh, what I'll say is in Ghana, the problem is not with the players. For me, when I say the problem is it's not with the players, it's the the recruitment, which is a problem, you see. You have youngsters who are there who want to prove a point that they are good players, yet you start bringing back the old guns to, to start playing. Yes, they have delivered their days, their hey days have passed, you see. Even though they say that you can't kill all the old men or the old people in the village for, and you remain only youngsters, but in football it's a different story. Yes, we can have one or two. But not whereby you keep on bringing the old guys to, to, to come That's why Ankana has made it uh, has made a mistake because yes. they have recu recruited old 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 characters. You talk of Idris Ilunga Mbombo. Mm. They have brought Charles uh, Zulu from Zanako. They are in the evenings of their career. 
you talk of Jacob Mungulube, who previously played for Mufilia Wanderers, is also in the evening of his career. So I think they are just odd, odd, odd characters that are playing at Inkana. So the recruitment uh, process was, wasn't done well. Just like Zesco United, remember we even uh, did, and uh, we were arguing that Zesco also had uh, a very poor recruitment of players because odd players were put in the team. It's, it's only that they were lucky that they started winning uh, during the start of the season. But Red Arrows have st uh, stopped their winning uh, ways. Yeah. Again, look at their power dynamos. Their start has been shaky. And uh, uh, last weekend, they hammered Atletico, Atletico Frusaka. Five new. Vamuzo, your team. Is, no, this wait, 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 wait. Uh, is this the beginning of better days for Power 90? We are yet to see. What I, what I wanted to say was, uh, Atletico Frusaka, they are a stubborn team. I've seen them punish the so-called big guys in the, in, in the Zambian soccer league. Punish them, making them run up and down, chasing the ball. Yet when they went to Arthur Davis, they failed to live up to their expected standard. They met a team which as well loves playing around with the ball. That, that, that's the way Power Dynamos plays their football, is they play around with the ball. And now it was them who were finding it difficult now to cope up with the pace which Power Dynamos was showing because they told them, they showed them that the game you play, it's our game. We love playing around with the ball. And they were humbled with a five new uh, scoreline. And I can say, welcome to the big boys league. You yeah. know, it, it was disappointing humbling a big team like in Kana. In Kana. Hmm? It, it is so disappointing. That's why they were, they were even able to say, to part ways with Ian Bakal and the group. So now they have been brought down by Power Dynamos and shown them that this is where you belong. All right, but Melvin, another team which is doing well, uh, Mutondo Football Club. They have been winning and in the, on the table they are on number three. They humbled in Deni uh, 1 0, and then was at home, Mutondo was away, they humbled, and they have been doing better. What's the secret in, at, at Mutondo FC? I have watched um, Tondo Stars at Levy Manawasta Stadium. I've watched them at Chinde Stadium. They beat Mighty and Freer Wanderers by two goals to new. A surprising re uh, result from Freer Wanderers. And um, they continued. They never stopped from there. They <coughs> met uh, Red Arrows at uh, Levy Manawasta Stadium. They beat Red Arrows by three goals to one. They never stopped from there. They, they, they visited Indeni just last week, and they managed to beat Indeni by a long goal. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a good team. I think uh, uh, David Chilufia is doing very well as a coach from Tundo Stars. They are playing right. entertaining football. Uh, if you saw how uh, they played against Red Arrows, I think Red Arrows, uh, they were outplayed nearly in all departments. Uh, for me, I think Tundo Stars is a team to, to watch. They are lying forth on the log, I think. Um, they, they, they are contenders. Uh, if they continue with the pace, you may have a surplus package in the Continental uh, 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 Championship for them. All right. Uh, let's also move on to the under-20 who have qualified the Africa Cup of Nations. And uh, they participated in the Kosafa Cup where they came number two and they gave away their championship to South Africa after the battle they had against uh, uh, the battle, we call it the, the battle of the Kariba. They, they won through penalties against Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe and then now booked their ticket to the final against South Africa where they host. And uh, they gave away the, the, the championship. Bamuzo, how do you look at the performance of the under 20 at, the, at this year's uh, Kosafa Cup? I'll be honest with you. I watched that game and South Africa deserved to be regional champions. Because if you look at the statistics, South Africa, they never considered them go up to the final. They hammered the Malawi 5-0. Up to the final, they never considered any going between, in between until they beat Zambia 2-0. And for Zambia, they considered eight goals on their way to the final. And they scored five goals, which is, a, they are in the negative. So South Africa, personally, for me, they deserve to be champions. And the game I watched, they were a more coordinated team compared to Zambia. Zambia had the individual brilliance in between the, amongst them, but just that coordination, it was lacking, it was not there. 
There's, their captain, David Simkonda, is a marvel to watch. There was this Emmanuel Mwanza, he's a good player. All they need is just the motivation, somebody to, to, to sit down with them, tell them, you've got a bright future in front of you, so just concentrate on playing football. These other vices, you'll find them at a, at a later stage. Otherwise, individually, they are good players, but all they need is adequate, adequate preparation as they go for the AFCON. Otherwise, they're a good bunch of boys. Yeah, Melvin, look at the, the, the performance of Boyd Muranda's boys. To me, was it worth it? It's like they only won one game. Yeah, I think I'm Technically, they didn't win any game. The Zimbabwe game, it was a draw in 90 minutes. So, Lotteries, yeah. Yes, they, they won through, through lottery. Yeah. Yes. So, I think, yeah, average uh, performance for Zambia. Uh, they played against Angola, they were beaten three goals to one. And uh, if you look at that game, I think Zambia was outplayed. So it, it tells you a lot that I think Zambia, we never had uh, our, our usual game as under 20. Yes, there are individual brilliant that uh, we can sing out, like obvious Maditet, uh, Makungu, Msonda. I think they were the players that uh, even played uh, the last uh, uh, tournament, but then they were adding value to the team. But uh, what my observation is that uh, I think they need to gel together so that uh, they improve from there. Because if you look at the game that uh, Coach Msonda said, uh, we played Zimbabwe. And uh, we managed to score two goals. But uh, towards the end of the game, we allowed the, the Zimbabweans to come on us and uh, they equalized. It was 2-2 and the game went to the lotteries. And uh, that game would have gone either way. It's either Zimbabwe would have won, but Zambia survived and uh, uh, went, went to sudden death. The Zimbabwe missed, Zambia scored, and uh, we managed to win on post-match penalties. But you saw we were played by South Africa. South Africans had a lot of pace. It was interesting to watch South Africans. I watched that game towards the end, I think. I, I was happy the way the South Africans were running and uh, with uh, the spectators running, running behind the South African team. I, I think uh, they played a very good game and they deserve to be, to be Southern African champions. Ramoza, do we have hope for this under-20 team or the, the technical bench needed to be reinforced so that we do well on the continental stage now? Where we have, quali we have qualified is not like Osafa. It's not the kids play now. You know... Um in Zambia, we've got this tendency of bringing in people at the last minute, saying, no, we have to reinforce the technical bench because of this and that. What I can say is, Mulwanda and his group, they are okay. All they need is ample time to prepare the boys. Adequate preparation is needed. Otherwise, if we start bringing in the new people to help with the preparation or what, we'll just be disturbing the rhythm. So he's, he's already assembled a good team. Maybe it's, it's especially the defense, conceding eight goals in the tournament, it's, it's not health. You know, the period is just too short for you to concede those eight goals. So that's where he has to work on. Otherwise, it's, it's a good technical bench. All right, uh, time is not with us again, but uh, we need to look at the English uh, Premier League for week seven, which were played over, over the weekend. And uh, we saw Crystal Palace versus Liverpool. Uh, Crystal Palace 1-0, Liverpool 1. Arsenal 3, or the Gunners. South Antom 1. Brentford 5, Wolves 3. Man City 3, Fulham 2. West Ham 4. Ipswich Town 1. Leicester City 1. Bournemouth, zero. Everton, zero. Newcastle, zero. Aston Villa, zero. Manchester United, zero. Chelsea, one. Nottingham Forest, one. Brighton, three. Tottenham, two. Uh, those were the results for the English Premier League results. Uh, let's look at the game against uh, Arsenal versus Southampton. Vamuzo. Arsenal has continued with the winning ways. Yes, Arsenal, they have assembled a very good side. And if, if you've noticed, the athleticism in the team, it's so high such that they never drop the tempo whenever they are playing, whether they are down or what, they don't drop the pace. They keep on running until they get the goal, and they'll keep on coming at you. They, got, they get the second goal. So Arsenal is a very good side. And I knew it that no matter how much resistance Southampton is going to put up, they won't be able to cope up with the Arsenal pace. So it's congratulations to Atet and his boys. 
they are doing a tremendous job. He's assembled a very good side. And he's still assembling a uh, side. He's still bringing other players to reinforce the team. So we, ha we have to be prepared for Arsenal challenging for the, for the championship. All right. We have also the leaders, Liverpool, humbling Crystal Palace at home, one new. How uh, about Melvin? <laughs> Yeah, you know, Crystal Palace is a stubborn team, but then they met uh, Liverpool, I think, a no-nonsense team, I think they mean business this uh, time around, this season, they want to probably to lift uh, uh, the league. I think Liverpool has done extremely very well, uh, they are topping the league, yes, uh, after playing seven games, and uh, they, are, they, are, they are leading the league, yes. Yes, Arsenal, uh, just like uh, my friend has said, yeah, they may have uh, beaten uh, uh, Southampton, yes. That game was also quite very entertaining, but um, Arsenal, as you know, uh, it's, a, it's a team that uh, is always uh, starting very well and they end up uh, uh, missing the opportunity to lift the league. But for Liverpool, they have maintained, if you look at the way they have been playing, they have maintained the winning formula, the winning ways. They have won, I think, uh, in the last three games, I think they have managed to collect is it, uh, nine, nine, nine points. Yeah, no, they recorded uh, a loss against uh, the Young Forest. Yes, yeah, yes. They managed to beat them by a goal to nil. But from there, they did uh, build up. Uh, they have recorded two wins and they are topping the league. For, for me, I think Coach Sult has done extremely very well with the team. And they were seeing uh, Diaz, uh, who is also quite adding value to the team. Uh, the legend, uh, Mo Salah, is also adding uh, value to the team. So Liverpool, I think, is a team that uh, is meaning business this season. And you may just see Liverpool emerging. Uh, 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 champions, but I think it's a long way to go. Manchester City, Chelsea, they are also coming. Uh, Arsenal is also, though they have uh, got uh, the, the, the poor finishing attitude. Yeah, the last time they, the Liverpool, the last time they lifted the cup was in an empty stadium because of COVID. <laughs> are they now trying this time to show people that this time they will have supporters <laughs> I tell if you they lift the cup? <laughs> they mean business this time around. Uh, uh, you know, they have assembled a team. And um, if you look at all the departments for, for Liverpool, I think there is uh, the most important thing that I've seen with uh, Coach Slot uh, for Liverpool, there is that uh, coordination. The players have managed to gel together and they, 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 they look for each other uh, when it comes to ball possession. During the, the last uh, uh, final third, there is precision and we have seen how they are scoring goals for fun. Yes, they may have both scored a uh, goal uh, against uh, Crystal Palace, but the most important thing is to collect three maximum points. All right. Uh, look at the whipping boys now. Manchester United drawing 0-0 against Aston Villa, and they were away at Aston Villa. What's on that? You know, Aston Villa, it's a very trick side. Just before they played the Manchester United, they had beaten Bayern Munich in the Champions League. So even for Manchester... There's one thing I noticed a bit in that game. Uh, Aston Villa, they were not chasing the ball the way they usually do. I don't know if they were tired from the previous game which they played with Bayern. And I would say Manchester, they were lucky to have, gone with the, to have gotten a point from that game. I was expecting another beating from, from Aston Villa. Otherwise, it could have continued. I thought another 3-0 was coming for Manchester United. <laughs> but fortunate enough, they were able to get a point from Aston Villa. Otherwise, we don't have to write off Aston Villa. Aston Villa are there. They can still compete for the Champions League slot in this, year's, uh, in, in this season's uh, championship. So Aston Villa, we have to count them to be among the big boys. All right. Uh... Another game was Man City against Fulham. Man City was at home winning 3-2. They were also lucky. Fulham was also very good. Yeah, if you have seen Fulham, I think this season uh, they have also played uh, very good football. So that I think they are not lucky. They, they met a team that is very uh, uh, strong, uh, capable, and they also want to defend uh, uh, the league. So Man City, yes, uh, managed to win Fulham. But for me, I think Fulham, uh, the way I've seen them uh, this season, I think they, they have also uh, tried to stabilize the team and they they up to uh, up to uh, you know uh, wanting to to participate and up, add up numbers and uh, probably they can also be in the top uh, four brackets. All right, uh, we saw also Musonda. We saw also Brighton beating Tottenham three two. I watched that game. Uh, Tottenham was leading at some point in the early minutes of the game, but all I could see is uh, in the second half 
Brighton reorganizing themselves and giving Tottenham a good run for the game. And it was game on. Tottenham, they were made to pay for their mistakes. Eventually, it was the Brighton who carried the day. That's the name of, that's the, name of the game. You, 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 you relax, you pay for your, for your mistakes. So in football, you have to continue that concentration. And then you, you are able to get the results which are required. Just like he was talking about Liverpool. Liverpool, they are still a good side. Let me not say they have assembled because they have not added any prominent figure in their team this season because they have maintained the players who were there last season and the only new face in their team was at now it's Federico Chiesa who is not even he had a major contribution in the team. So we could say Slot has done a tremendous job at Liverpool because he has continued where his predecessor left and they are able to get the results which are needed. Because in football, the transition from one coach to another is what disturbs the team. Now for Liverpool, the smooth sailing has continued under Ernst Lodge. So we have, to be, we have to give kudos to Liverpool. All right. And another team, Leicester City, uh, they managed to beat uh, Bournemouth once at home. And uh, Patson's Daka is still not with the team because of the injury that he has and he has been just watching the games from the terraces because of the injury. At least now they managed to beat uh, Bournemouth. Uh, be, Melvin. Be, be, before they played this encounter, I think I was telling my colleagues that uh, uh, I'm seeing a situation where Leicester City would have uh, won promotion in the Elite League, but uh, they will easily get back to where they belong, uh, the, 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 the championship. But it was very surprising to see that uh, they beat a team that looked very stubborn and they managed to win by a goal to nil. So for me, I think, yes, despite uh, Patson Dark not uh, playing because of injury, it is very important that Leicester City carries the momentum of winning so that they can survive. Because the way they have been playing, I think they have recorded losses, and uh, if they are to pick a point, it's only a draw. And uh, we have seen most of the games that they have played, uh, they played six games, and uh, they are uh, week seven, they have played six games, which I think for me, they have only recorded uh, only one win. They were the one they beat uh, uh, Bournemouth. And the rest, I think, it was uh, a stalemate and the rest have been losses. So they lack consistency, which is, uh, uh, must be changed uh, uh, by the, the, the coach. So for me, I think um, they, there is uh, room for improvement for Leicester City. And I only hope that uh, they can carry on with the momentum so that uh, come next uh, uh, weekend, they manage again to post a positive result. All right, gentlemen, uh, the time is not... Uh Time is against us, but uh, before we end our program, uh, maybe Musonda, you can actually give your last words and also your prediction against Zambia versus Chad uh, this Friday. No, all I would say is to the fans is to turn up in numbers to Levi Manasa, go and give the boys the support that which they need. Uh, otherwise, if we mess up in this game, then we are done. We are not going to the AFCON. So we just have to turn up in numbers and support the boys. Otherwise, it's a tough encounter. For my prediction, I wouldn't go beyond two. But I don't expect Chad to score. I will give it a 2 0 to Zambia. Melvin. It's a huge uh, game, quite very important uh, game for Zambia. And this is a game that uh, if Zambia wins, it will give them uh, more motivation going into the, the, the return game, which will be played, just like you said, Toby, in Yaoundé, Cameroon, uh, where Chad will host Zambia. So for me, uh, looking at uh, the players that have been assembled, just like we said, we have young stars, Joseph Sabubu Banda, we saw what he can do when he played Sierra Leone. We have Obino Chisala, we have Kretas Chotachama, we have uh, the likes of Kings Kangwa, the one who scored the deciding, the deciding goal, the set piece, the most important set piece that uh, we saw at Levy Manasa Stadium. So looking at uh, the composition of the players, Avram Grant has assembled, I think we are good to go, and I give it three new for Zambia. Thank you. Three new to Zambia. <laughs> yeah. That's very wonderful. Well, viewers, we have come to the end of our program. And we have been discussing football, especially the game that Zambia will play against Chadi right here in Indola at Lev Manawasa Stadium. The game will take place on, 
on Friday on 11th October. And tickets are going on in ShopRite, so you are free to get your tickets so that we come and cheer the boys as they take on Chadi so that they can qualify to the Africa Cup of Nations. We need Zambia to also uh, continue participating on the continental stage by ensuring that they are consistent in two qualifying to the Africa Cup. And uh, we, are, we are looking at the games that uh, the Zambia national team women's uh, will be participating at the Kosafa Cup in, Johann in South Africa. And uh, the team has already been assembled and the group has uh, they have already been drawn. Zambia will be in group uh, G against Angola and the Comoros. So we wish the best to the, to the Copa Queens so that at least they, they remain top of the group once the, the games start. And you are all welcome to come and cheer the boys and at Lev Manawasa also as Zambia takes on uh, Chadi. And that game will be played at 15 hours and it will be during the day. So we expect more fans to fill the stadium so that at least we cheer the boys. So I have been your host, Tovini Ngombe, and uh, see you next time.